All right, so welcome to my series of videos on managerial economics. And in this um, particular video, it is part of the series on consumer behavior. In this particular video, I'm going to teach on an indifference curve and its properties. So in this particular video, I'm going to teach on indifference curve and its properties. Now, let's begin by defining indifference curve. So a fundamental tool for analyzing consumer behavior is an indifference curve. An indifference curve is simply the combination, the various combinations of goods and services that provides the individual with the same level of satisfaction. So indifference curve is the various combination of goods and services that provides the consumer with the same So it's a various combination of goods and services that provides the consumer the same level of satisfaction. Now, of course, if goods and services provide you with the same level of satisfaction, you, in terms of making a choice, you'll be indifferent. Hence, the name indifference curve. So this is typically an indifference curve. This is how it looks like. What I want you to take away from this particular slide is that indifference curve I is lower than indifference curve II. And indifference curve II is also lower than indifference curve III. In other words, if you, are, if you have a product on, if you have a bundle on indifference curve III, it means that you'll be more satisfied than indifference curve II. Because the higher the curve or the further the curve moves away from the origin, the higher the satisfaction, okay? So note that, that indifference curve II gives a higher level of satisfaction as compared to II, and it also gives a higher level of satisfaction as compared to I. Now, what are the properties of the indifference curve? So we ha it has four basic properties, then I'll finally talk about two other properties. Number one, is the completeness property. Number one is the completeness property. Now here, remember I told you that when we say your preferences are complete, we should not ask you a question and you say, I don't know. You should be able to say, I prefer B to A because B gives me a higher level of satisfaction. Or I prefer B to C because B gives me a higher level of satisfaction. Or I am indifferent between A and C because A and C gives me the same level of satisfaction. And this is one of the reasons why the indifference curves do not intersect. For instance, if the curve is here, we have point A and point C. And there's another curve with point B. Now, since point B intersects with the, that of A and C, we can say that point B has the same level of satisfaction as A and C. But that's not the case because point B is actually supposed to be on a, on a higher indifference curve. So the completeness property is one of the reasons why the indifference curve does not intersect. Another property of the indifference curve is the more is better property. So another property of the indifference curve is more is better. Now, let's look at this diagram here. The person who chooses bundle B so bundle B has 3x and has 100y. Bundle A has 1x and has 100y. So 1x, 100y. Bundle C has um, 3x and then 33.33y. Now, if you're a consumer, definitely you choose B. I'll choose B because if I compare A and B, B has more X. So I'll choose B. Between A and B, I'll choose B. And between B and C, I'll still choose B. The reason is that if you compare B and C, even though B and C has the same level of X, B has more Y, okay? And that is another reason why the indifference curve do not intersect. So that is why point B is here, because at point B, it will give higher satisfaction, definitely because 
it has more of x as compared to bundle A, and it has more of y as compared to bundle C. And that's re another reason why the indifference curve does not intersect. The third property of the indifference curve is diminishing marginal rate of substitution. The third property of the indifference curve is the diminishing marginal rate of substitution. And what I want you to know is that marginal rate of substitution is simply the slope of the indifference curve. So the slope or the gradient of the indifference curve is referred to as the marginal rate of substitution. The slope of the indifference curve is referred to as the marginal rate of substitution. Okay. Now, what we are trying to say here is that, you see, anytime we have a negative slope, it means that if you, are, if you want to get more Y, you have to sacrifice X. Anytime your curve is negatively slow, it means once you're going to get more of the one on the Y axis, you have to sacrifice the one on the X axis. Or if you want to get more of what is on X axis, you have to sacrifice what is on Y axis, okay? So simply, the slope of the indifference curve it shows the rate at which we can sacrifice X for Y and still maintain the same level of satisfaction. The rate at which we can sacrifice X for Y and still maintain the same level of satisfaction. That is the interpretation of the slope of the indifference curve. And the slope of the indifference curve is called the marginal rate of substitution. But more importantly, what I want you to know is that the marginal rate of substitution, it diminishes. The reason is that initially, if I'm moving from point A to point B, I'll sacrifice 50Y just to get one X, one additional X. But you see, as I'm sacrificing more and more of Y to get more and more of X, the satisfaction I get from X will begin to diminish because I'm now consuming more and more of X. So if the satisfaction I get from X diminishes, what it simply means is that I will not be willing to sacrifice more Y for X again. That is why if I want to get an additional X, you see that I'll just sacrifice a little Y, not like before. First, I sacrifice 50 Y by now, I'm going to sacrifice 16.67 Y because from 50 to 33, it's just 16.67. Okay, and if I want to get another X again, I'm going to sacrifice um, between 33.33 and then 25, I'm going to sacrifice 8.33 Y. So you see that the rate at which I'm sacrificing one for the other diminishes. So it simply means that the slope of the indifference curve diminishes. Now let's give, or let's do a mathematical interpretation of the slope of the indifference curve. Now, remember that marginal utility of X will be changed in total utility of X over change in quantity of X. So if you do change of subject, Change in total utility of X equal to marginal utility of X times change in X. This also means that if you have another commodity like commodity Y, it also means that change in total utility of Y will be equal to marginal utility of Y times change in Y. Now, since we are consuming both X and Y, if you want to find the change in total utility of both, it will be change in total utility of X plus change in total utility of Y. Here again, this will give us change in total utility is equal to, remember change in total utility of X is MU of X times change in X. And then change in total utility of Y is so plus MU of Y times change in Y. 
But what I want you to know is that, you see, on the same indifference curve, when there is change in X and change in Y, change in total utility will be equal to zero. What it simply means is that on the same indifference curve, remember, it is the different combinations of X and Y that will give the same utility. So on the same indifference curve, once X and Y are even changing and having different combinations, that there will be no change in what utility. The change utility will be equal to zero, All right? So we can now rewrite this function here as zero is equal to MU of X times change in X plus MU of Y times change in Y, okay? So here we will now have zero is equal to MU of X times change in X plus MU of Y times change in Y. So if you send this to the left-hand side, we now have MU of Y times change in Y is equal to MU of X times change in X. So sorry, negative here because it crosses to this side. So if you divide both sides by MU of X, sorry, MU of Y, by MU of Y, this and this cancel, we now have minus change in Y is equal to MU of X over MU of Y times change in X. Again, if you divide both sides by change in X over change in X, this and this will cancel. So finally, we have minus change in Y over change in X is equal to MU of X over MU of Y. Now remember that the slope of a straight line is changing Y over changing X. So it means that the slope of the indifference curve, which is also called the marginal rate of substitution, is equal to minus changing Y over changing X, and it's also equal to MU of X over MU of Y. Okay, so the slope of the indifference curve is minus y over, minus change in y over change in x, or is the same as mu of x over mu of y. And that is a marginal utility interpretation of the marginal rate of substitution. Now, the last property of the indifference curve is the transitivity property, transitivity property. Now this property says that if you prefer A to B, so in this sense, if you look at this case, C is on the highest level of satisfaction. So if you prefer C to B and you prefer B to A, you must prefer C to A. And obviously this is also one of the reasons why the indifference can you know, intersect. Because if you prefer C to B, it means that C is on a higher indifference curve. If you prefer B, A, it means B is on a higher indifference curve as compared to A. So it means that definitely you should prefer C to A. The reason is that C is on the highest indifference curve among the three, all right? And that is why it will not intersect. Other properties of the indifference curve is that it is downward sloping, of course, because if you want to obtain more of Y, you have to reduce X. And if you want to obtain more of X, you have to reduce Y. So that's why it is negatively sloped or it is downward sloping. Again, another property of the indifference curve is that it is converse in nature, converse in nature. And the converse nature, as I explained earlier, is because of the fact that it is, or it has the property of marginal or diminishing marginal rate of substitution. All right, and um, typically here again, this is an indifference map, just to show, I mean, a graph of several indifference curves, just to show that curve IV gives a high level of satisfaction as compared to curve III. Curve III gives a high level of satisfaction as compared to curve II. And then curve II gives a high level of satisfaction as compared to I. So this will bring us to the end of the video on the properties of the indifference curve. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the fact that even though we may want to maximize our satisfaction, we have to operate within our means or our constraints. Now, the, one of the constraints you normally face is the constraint.
constraint of income. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about income as a constraint. Kindly like, comment, let us have your feedback, but most importantly, share and then subscribe to this channel. Thank you and meet you in the next video.